Hello everyone. So today I am with uh, the new experiment of this digital communication part, and the experiment is for PPM, that is pulse position modulation. Okay. So basically, when we are talking about pulse position modulation, so basically it is a technique of modulation. Okay, which is a part of pulse modulation. So what is basically the pulse modulation? It is the technique where the position of pulse carrier is varied according to the modulating signal. Okay. So, but when we are talking about pulse position modulation, so it is one of that technique where the relative position of the pulse in a carrier pulse train is made proportional to the instantaneous value of the modulating signal. Okay. In that case, what happens now? Uh, the height and width remain same. Okay. But from time to time, what happens? The position changes. Okay. According to the amplitude of the signal. Okay. At that instant of sampling, when the baseband signal is being sampled okay so what actually this means that the ppm in ppm case what happens the width remains same with uniform height but its position actually changes okay it changes according to the amplitude of the signal at the instant of sampling okay and this happens with one more case and in this part, what happens? We are going to use uh, two triple five timer IC here. Okay. So the first one IC is in uh, A stable mode, that is A stable multi vibrator mode. And the second one IC is in moon stable mode. Okay. So here I have written here if we fed the PWM signal to the trigger input of IC triple five in moon stable mode, then the output of moon stable will be PPM wave. So that means that if we fed pulse width modulation signal to a triple five timer IC which is in monostable mode then the output signal would be PPM okay so that means we need to make PWM signal from the first triple five timer IC okay so this one IC is uh, basically currently present in the E stable mode so this will provide us PWM signal and we will fit this PWM signal to the second IC that is triple five timer IC and then we will get the PPM output okay so here uh, we have I have written some data here that what actually is happening in this so here you can see uh, this in this circuit two triple five timer IC is used the first one is in eastable mode and the second is in monostable mode so basically the input signal or the modulating signal is applied to the control terminal of the e-stable multi vibrator okay so the control terminal of this triple five timer ic is the fifth pin okay so we are going to apply the input signal to the fifth pin of this ic okay so when the input signal okay varies the control terminal voltage as since uh, we are uh, we, we are uh, going to give here modulating input as our ac wave okay so whenever the voltage or the amplitude varies the control terminal voltage what happens it leads to the switching voltage of the e-stable multi vibrator to change okay accordingly as the amplitude here changes okay so here the width of the pulse depends on the baseband signal so whatever kind of baseband signal or the message signal okay the baseband signal is the message signal only so whatever uh, kind of the width uh, we are using okay accordingly that thing uh, our uh, width of the pulse will vary okay so when positive peak of the wave occurs then the pulse width is maximum and when the negative peak, peak occurs the pulse width is minimum okay so this one is for uh, our pwm case okay so this first triple five timer ic generates pwm wave then this is applied to pin number two okay so the pin number two is the trigger remember this thing the pin number two is the trigger of uh, the triple five timer ic okay so this is applied to pin number two of the second triple five timer IC. Okay, so the second triple five timer IC work as monostable multi vibrator mode. Okay, so the first one is acting as uh, e stable mode, and second one is acting in the monostable multi vibrator mode. Okay, so in place of the negative trigger pulse at pin number two, we have given the PWM output. Okay, from the first timer IC. So in this case, what we get? at the output of this uh, second IC we get PPM okay so this position of the output pulse actually it varies according to the width of the input pulse and the width of the input pulse is generally 
dependent on this modulating input signal okay so this is how we get our ppm output okay so if you look the wave okay just look at the wave here so this is the input trigger and this is the modulating signal okay which we are providing so here uh, firstly we are getting the pulse width mo modulation output okay and here afterwards you can see the ppm output okay so you can see here in the case of pwm the trailing edge of every output of the pwm okay it is basically the starting point for ppm output wave okay in every case okay you can see here so uh, this we will uh, perform in our multi sim okay and we will give here the value of register capacitor nominally so that uh, it could give us a good ppm output okay so i have already made here the circuit you can see here so this is basically the uh, circuit for uh, the first one is for pwm then the second one is for ppm okay now we can use here diode also in the pwm part okay and other register uh, values we can use here also okay but we have used these values so that we could get that good output of pwm in order to get a good output of ppm okay remember uh, when uh, we will uh, perform an experiment of pwm we will make a little bit different circuit okay having a, some different uh, uh, values of the component okay so that we could get a good kind of pwm wave okay but here in order to make ppm wave we are going to use those values which would be suitable for our second ic okay to make a good ppm output okay here you can see here uh this rst okay or the reset is being shorted with vcc okay the discharge pin or the seventh pin it is also shorted with vcc by the help of 4 coulomb resistor okay and here on uh, the threshold and uh, the trigger okay both the pin are being shorted to each other okay and it is being connected to the discharge pin by the help of 10 kilohm resistor okay and then it is being grounded okay by the help of one nanofarad capacitor okay here this one is a control pin okay it is connected to the input source here or the modulating signal okay so the modulating signal is the ac1 so you can see here one volt peak to peak one kilohertz wave i am using here so it is connected by the help of 10 microfarad capacitor here okay and the ground one is grounded here so we have taken the output from pin number three here that this is our pwm output and this is being connected to the trigger pin of this triple five timer i see remember the trigger pin is pin number two okay so here you can see also that the discharge pin is being connected to uh, this uh, voltage source okay which we have provided to both the ic okay so we have actually provided here 10 volt okay 10 volt to both the ic okay if you want you can provide 5 volt to this ic and 5 volt to this ic separately okay it is not needed that uh, you may short all the uh, pins of the vcc here okay so if you want you can give both the ic separately their voltage okay so the discharge pin is being connected with a 1 kilo ohm register with vcc and the rsp and vcc is being shorted here also okay as was done in the first ic here also discharge and threshold pin i have shorted okay and this is being grounded by the help of 0.01 microfarad capacitor and here the control pin is being grounded with the help of 0.01 microfarad of capacitor okay and here we have taken the output here okay so as already i have performed this experiment that's why i have changed the color of this output to violet okay so that we could uh, surely look at the output okay in a good way okay so uh, i'm going to run this circuit here okay now i will just open this oscilloscope so here we are getting our wave okay so the output uh, voltage of both the pwm and ppm is similar that's why uh, we are unable to uh, 
clearly look at those waves so i am just going to decrease the scale division of one of the wave okay so i will decrease it here Achha, make it 10 volt and this one would be 5 volt okay now just stop the simulation now just look at the wave here okay so basically this red one or the second channel of this oscilloscope it is being connected here to the pwm output okay that is of the first I see. Okay, and here the violet one is basically connected to the second output or the output of second IC. Okay, so this one is the PPM wave. Okay, so we can see here. Just look here at this part. Okay, when you will look at this thing, look at this part. Okay, so we are seeing here that at the trailing end, whenever the PWM is trailing. Okay, that the trailing end of PWM, we are getting our PPM wave everywhere. Okay, so since I have changed here the scale division, that's why we are getting that uh, PPM is having lower amplitude here. But it is not lower amplitude for uh, looking this wave clearly. I have just uh, increased here the scale division. Okay, if you want to change the division, you could change this here. Okay, both the amplitude of uh, the wave of PPM and PWM. It's same that means the voltage of both the wave is same basically okay so this is the output which we have got here okay and uh, the this looks good okay you could look here and uh, that uh, uh, this red width of this that this uh, red pulse okay so this red pulse is uh, the pwm wave and if you look at uh, this violet pulse Okay, so this violet signal is of the PPM. So you can look here, uh, here the width of these waves are, it is increasing from left to right part. Okay, just you can look here. Okay, and here if you look, the, it is decreasing. Okay, but uh, the width of this blue, okay, this violet, sorry, this violet pulse, it is nearly same. If you want, you can examine this thing also. So just we will uh, take the pulse width of this PPM. Okay, so it is currently 10.606. Okay, this violet one. So just take this width with another pulse. So here we will take the pulse width here. Okay, so it also look around. Okay, just make it clear. Yeah, no. Just look at uh, this thing 10.606 microsecond only. Okay, so this one is T2 minus T1. So that time difference between the edge of the pulse, okay, that is the width of the pulse of PPM, we are getting 10.606 microsecond only. Okay, but if you will look at the pulse width modulation, okay, that is our red wave, you will surely find a difference in the width here. Okay, firstly we are examining the width of this pulse. So this is currently 10.985 microsecond. Okay, and when we'll examine the width of any another pulse. So just look here. Here, the pulse width of this red signal is 16.288 microsecond. Okay, so basically the red one is PWM. That's why uh, it is changing. The width is changing. Okay, and here, since the width of these signal, PWM signal is changing, Okay, that's why the position of this PPM signal is also changing. Okay, as the PPM signal starts when the PWM signal is trailing. It's tra at its trailing end, the PPM signal actually starts. So here if you want also, you can check the width of this PPM signal. You will get around 10.606 only. Okay, so basically uh, it looks, it looks 10.606. Okay, so basically this one was the examining part of our signal so basically this one is the circuit okay i hope you have understood that how to find out how to plot the data of the ppm signal okay and we have examined that yes we have uh, plotted our ppm signal by the help of pwm signal okay if you want you can analyze uh, these things by the help of four channel oscilloscope also in that case you could examine here the modulating signal also okay so this one was the end of the experiment.
experiment i hope you understood very well about this ppm signal thank you for watching